the worst case scenario just happened. This all started thanks to Walt Disney World and Happily Ever After. If you ever find yourself in Magic Kingdom, be sure to stick around later in the evening for their firework and projection show. It's absolutely spectacular. Last year, we jumped right into the deep end, not knowing anything, and the result was pretty good. Not where I wanted it to be, but we made a great show with severely limited experience. This is a two-part video. If you're only interested in seeing the projection show, go ahead and skip to part two. If you're interested in how we did everything, go ahead and stick around and watch this video. We hope you watch both. 2020 has brought a lot of changes and new things into our life, including a beautiful baby girl. So the priorities have shifted quite a bit. Throughout 2020, I've gotten a lot of comments on last year's projection mapping video, and I really appreciate them, but people are reminding me that in that video, I said I was going to make some changes for 2020, and they're like, I'm so excited, can't wait to see what you did in 2020. Unfortunately, I waited until November, <laughs> so I did not get a head start on this at all, and I kind of scrambled together to try to improve the show. So right before the birth of our baby girl, I just decided to throw myself into this show as much as I could, much to the chagrin of my wife. And there's really three main ways that you could upgrade a projection show. The first one being the projector, uh, the second one being the surface that you're projecting on, and then the third one being upgrading the projector and the surface, and I decided to go with three. <laughs> Now, I didn't make a huge upgrade. I changed from a regular lamp projector to a laser projector, and I went from 3,800 lumens to 4,200 lumens. Not anything earth shattering. A major upgrade in projector would be like tens of thousands of dollars. They make some insane laser projectors, and they're like 100 grand. But in my opinion, the laser projector has one major advantage over the old style lamp projector, and I'll get into that more later. For the surface, there's really two ways to do it. One would be painting it with a reflective paint. I think this is why they actually repainted Cinderella's Castle and Walt Disney World. And the other would be just getting a new surface to project on. Because I didn't want to paint my entire house, which I thought would be ridiculous, um, I went with a new surface. I had played around with using just bed sheets and the result was surprisingly good. Much better than the brick, but not quite there. I started to hunt around for projection screens or just the material that they're made out of. And I quickly found out that that stuff is pretty expensive, but I just happened upon older style projection screens. So like four, three ratio or one to one for like a overhead projector, not your 16 by nine, which everyone's using today. And those older aspect ratio screens were significantly cheaper than the newer 16 by nine. I could essentially cover the front of my house and screens for around $250. The next thing that I wanted to do was find a way to automate the screen. So I started looking into automatic screens and from what I found, those run like a thousand dollars a piece and I would need like five or six of them to cover the front of my house. That was not an option. I started to dream up a powered screen system with those one-to-one -one aspect ratio screens and 19 trips to the hardware store, seven trips to Home Depot and one trip to Harbor Freight later. We now have powered screens. We used anchor bolts to attach pulleys onto our house. We used wire rope, originally started with paracord, found out that wasn't a good system. Went over to wire rope, ran that through the pulleys up to the screens. We also used a winch from Harbor Freight. We had to get rid of the latching mechanism on the screen so that they would just pull down, be held in place, and then go right back up. So now that I found the screens, I started thinking of ways that I could automate them. And you may remember from last year that I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 to control my projector and play the video files to get everything going. It's an awesome, simple little system using Falcon Pi Player. Now, I discovered that the Falcon Pi Player had a smart home plugin that can control different things in the house using smart things. So I looked around for a controller. I found one. I believe this is the name of the company. It's Z-O-O-Z, -O -O -Z, Zoos. They make a smart relay called the S2. And I got that, tried it with an AC winch originally, and I've been staring at wiring diagrams for probably three hours, and I cannot figure out how to remote control this AC powered winch. I'm probably gonna have to switch over to a DC powered winch. I took circuits years ago and have forgot way more about circuits than I ever knew about circuits, and I could not get it to work with an AC winch. AC is a little more complicated than DC. DC, you just switch the polarity, you can get the winch to go out and in, 
I was able to get the DC winch to work with the relay because Zoo's customer service is awesome and they helped me with any question that I had and really their customer service, super responsive, incredible, really, really helpful. So big thumbs up to Zoo's there. They didn't send me anything or sponsor or anything. They were just really kind. The Smart Things controller is gonna tell the winch to go for about 20 seconds. The first thing that I ran into was that a 20 second letting, letting the cable out and 20 seconds back in is not the same every time. So you could have the screen come down partially and then go back fully or come down way too far. So time-based using the controller and a DC winch, I found out, I'm sure if you are like an expert, you know this stuff, but I found out that is not a reliable way to do it. So then I started looking for another way to control it and I stumbled upon limit switches. So essentially what happens is the winch turns on, it pulls the cable in until the screen is getting close to the bottom and then it hits a limit switch, which then cuts the power to just that direction of the winch. It works very well as long as these limit switches hold up, which I'm not sure they will. These are not really industrial. Then when it goes to let out, it'll let out the cable and then it hits another limit switch, which then tells it to stop letting the cable out. So it just keeps hitting those limit switches and it's worked very well so far. Now I will say that the DC winch is much louder than the AC winch that I tried. So we built a little enclosure to go around the winch to try to like tone down the noise. It helps from the street, but it's still pretty loud in the house. A few test runs, some mess ups, a switch from paracord over to wire rope and we had our timing down. Really wasn't that hard, but we got it inside of Falcon Pie Player. But what about the show itself? Everything we've done up until this point has just helped the show to look better, but everyone was wondering and asking about an upgrade to the actual show. So that's exactly what we went for. I quickly learned last year that doing everything myself in After Effects just was not cost effective because it was taking me so much time. This year I turned to Upwork. I put a proposal together, I put it out on Upwork and I got some bids. I still did a majority of the heavy lifting between the music and editing things, but the scenes in the intro and outro that you'll see later were created by freelancers on Upwork. It was a huge time savings and a really big win for me. Let's go back to the laser projector for a second here. The other big pro that I mentioned earlier is that the laser projector claims a 30,000 hour runtime. Your traditional lamp projectors don't come close to that. So that kind of got me thinking. Last year I was just running the show maybe for an hour and then I think the top of every hour and that was it. Now with the laser projector, I'm not really worried about lamp life at all. I keep the projector on from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every night. The show runs at the top and bottom of every hour and then I added some kind of subtle overlays in the time in between each show so that the projector just stays on. I also made some minor upgrades to the weatherproof housing. I added some shingles on top here and also this air spring. I'm not 100% sure the name of this thing, but one gust of wind last year knocked this door down and hit me in the head and I said, never again. Now it has stormed on this. I've been very nervous because of the electronics that are in here, but so far it's been bone dry inside. So hopefully that keeps holding up. Also, a lot of people asked about security last year. I'm not gonna get into the details, but I do have ways to secure this projector, even though it's staying out here. I hope you enjoy this year's show. Everything mentioned as well as resources to help you get into projection mapping will be listed in the description below. If you're interested in a more in-depth how-to, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. I really do appreciate it and Merry Christmas.